Hey, what's up everybody? I'd like to welcome you to another Juice tutorial. And in this tutorial, what we're going to do is talk a little bit about mouse actions. So by mouse actions, what I mean is what, what would I need to do if I wanted this black uh, component here to change to a different color when I hover my mouse over it and then change back when I stop hovering my mouse in that area? How would we go about doing that? Well, we're going to take a look at that in this tutorial. So if I stop this for a moment, we can take a look at our ball class. And this uh, and this code is coming from our last tutorial, which was on our timer. So you can download the skeleton code for that from uh, the link below. So this is our ball class, which defines that black region and the yellow ball. And if we take a look at our paint function, we can see that we have a uh, our, our color, uh, our, our black is filling the background, and then we have the ball, which is this G dot draw ellipse that's being uh, painted yellow by our set color, which is on the line above it. So what do we want to do if we need to change this when our mouse is hovering over that area? So we need to use what's called a virtual method. So if we go back to our header file here, we can see that our class ball is, is inheriting from our component class. So we use the component class to create the ball. And then if we take a look at our API for component, then what we could do is we can actually look here and we can see that we have these virtual methods uh, that we can use if we want our functionality for our ball class to behave differently than uh, just a regular component class. So if we want our component to react differently when our mouse enters the area, we can actually use this virtual method called mouse enter. Now we know that it's virtual because we have this little override keyword afterwards. Okay, so that just lets us know that we can, if we want our behavior for this class to be different from the component class, then what we could do is we can actually just call this function here called mouse enter, and we can specify that we want it to behave differently than uh, what we normally what would normally happen. So we want mouse enter, and we also want mouse mouse exit because when the mouse exit the area exits the area, then we want the uh, the color of the component to change back. So the way that we would do this is we could actually go back here and I can say void, and then I'm just going to paste this, mouse enter, and then we have this mouse event. Uh, and then what we could do is we could, we could say override. And what that does is that just basically says, okay, I'm, I'm about to, so I'm calling this mouse enter, which is a virtual method from our component class. And I'm going to want to do something differently here. So, and then what we could do is we could do the mouse exit here. And then I'm just gonna change this to exit. And then we will just implement these very quickly. So we got void ball, mouse enter. And then const mouse event and event. And then I'm just going to copy this very quickly. And then we got void. And then the class that we're in is ball, mouse exit. And then I'm just going to paste this here. So now we have implemented our functions. So now we need something in here that tells us what's going to happen uh, when the mouse, when when our uh, mouse actually enters this component. So one way that we could do this is we could set what's called a flag or a boolean a boolean flag, right? So I could just say bool is entered, and then I'll start it off by saying false, right? Because when we first start up when we first start up the app, it should be false that our mouse is actually in the area, right? And then what I could do is I could set that to true. So when, so what, what we're saying here is when the mouse enters the area, okay, uh, is entered is equal to true, okay? So the cool thing about this is that you don't have to worry about 
implementing all kinds of use cases to determine when the mouse has entered into the area. Juice has already done that for you. So a big shout out to Jules and the Juice team. And we can just set this back to false when mouse when the mouse exits. All right? So when the mouse goes in, it's true. When it's when it goes back out, it's false. And then what we could do here is we can actually just take this uh, this black background here and we can just adapt this. So I'll do it the long way first. Uh, so if we say uh, if is entered, then we do we'll do g dot fill all, and then I'll say colors, and then let's just say red. All right, else. And then we got our colors black, All right? So when we do this, so what should happen now is that when we go into the area, it should turn red and we see that it does, All right? So that works fine. So it can tell when the mouse enters that region and when it exits, pretty nice. So one way that we can kind of Simplify this. Uh, so this is perfectly this is perfectly fine to write it this way. Uh, a more kind of modern way of writing it is we can if we go down here below so you can see the two kind of together. We could do g dot. So this is what six or eight lines of code, and we can simplify this to one line of code, actually, by doing g dot fill all, and then a cool thing that we can do is we can say is entered so we can actually put our boolean in here and then we can use a question mark and then after the question mark we put what we want if this condition is true if is entered is true and then we can say colors red and then the then we put a colon after that which means uh kind of else shorthand for else and then we can put colors black Right, and then we can just get rid of all this. So that's kind of eight lines, seven, eight lines of code into one line, just like that. Okay, so that's kind of the more modern way of of doing it. Short, more modern, more short, shorthand way. So as you can see, it does the same thing. So, uh, so yeah, so that works fine. So let's just do it for the ball really quick. So we see that we set the color to of the ball to yellow. So once again, we could just do this same thing. We could do is entered. And then we could say colors. And let's just say gray, else, and then just set it to yellow if it's not. Okay, so here we are. And as you can see, the ball turns gray and then back to yellow, right? So that's a pretty simple one. Uh, and I'm trying to keep these tutorials a little bit shorter for everybody. So that's where I'm going to end things. So I hope you found this useful and I will see you next time.